Hello and thank you for showing interest in, in our research. My name is Dylan Martz and I'll be presenting common work with my colleagues Jose Maria Bermudomera, Angshuman Karmakar and Azam Soleimanian on efficient lattice-based inner product functional encryption. Let's start with some basics. Functional encryption introduced by Sahai and Waters in 2005, can be seen as a generalization of public key encryption, where we have a, say, trusted third party being able to produce public keys that enable an encryptor, say Alice in our case, to encrypt message X using the public key. And independent of that, uh, the tr trusted third party is able to produce functional keys depending on a function f that can be distributed to a decryptor, say, say Bob, who can, with the functional key, decrypt from the encryption of message x a function f of x. So, in some sense, the decryptor is able to do computation on encrypted message and decrypt only the result of this, of this function. Notice a similarity with homomorphic encryption, which also enables computing on encrypted data, but usually there the result is returned back to encryptor. In this case, in the case of functional encryption, the decryptor should be able to decrypt only the result. Let's try to understand what it means for a functional encryption scheme to be secure. The security notion is usually modeled as an indistinguishability game, where an adversary submits two messages, say x0 and x1, and the challenger encrypts one of them. The adversary shouldn't be able to tell which message was encrypted. But the challenge here is, in, in functional encryption, that the, challenge, that the adversary shouldn't be able to distinguish the message even if he or she has access to functional encryption keys with this limitation that, that he or she can ask only for functional encryption keys for functions that do not distinguish messages itself. So only for functions f such that f of x0 is equal to f of x1. There is a slight difference between selective and adaptive security, where the adaptive security is a bit stricter, demanding that the adversary cannot submit uh, messages x0, x1, even after he or she observed uh, the public parameters and public keys. There has been quite a lot of research done already in the field of functional encryption and there are many interesting results and constructions. There are designs for functional encryption schemes for arbitrary functions, but unfortunately, as it was shown, constructing such, such, such schemes is e equivalent to uh, indistinguishability obfuscation constructing which is known to be quite hard, and even though there were quite major breakthroughs recently, uh, they still remain uh, a bit impractical. For this reason, a subfield emerged, starting with uh, Abdallah et al. in 2015, focusing on providing functional encryption schemes that have some limited functionality, but designing these schemes had efficiency in mind, so they tried to provide schemes that, they could, that could be practical and implemented. In particular, uh, schemes for inner products, so linear functions were, were designed, and also quadratic functions uh, based on uh, well-established assumptions such as DDH, DCR, and LWE. Furthermore, they were extended to multi-client setting in decentralized or centralized way, uh, meaning that multiple encry encryptors can provide uh, ciphertext and also with uh, funct uh, function hiding property. 
So in this context, our work improves uh, this line of uh, line of work, where we want to wanted to provide efficient and practical ring LWE based, uh, so quantumly secure functional encryption scheme for inner inner product, and we do so with uh, selective and also adaptive security. So in particular, we improve results on uh, inner product functional encryption schemes based on LWE and we do this transition to ring LWE setting because we really want to, to provide schemes that can be considered practical since uh, the practicality of uh, existing LWE schemes as I will try to argue later are still quite quite limited. To provide these results we need to prove some new results on lattices as I will tell you later. And uh, additionally, to, to make the schemes even more practical, we provide also a compiler to decentralized identity-based multi-client inner product function encryption and a an quite highly optimized implementation uh, showing uh, our, our claims on, on efficiency. An inner product functional encryption scheme should support encrypting vectors say x in our case, and deriving functional encryption keys based on some other vector, say y, that enable you to decrypt an inner product of x and y, uh, of course having such a functional encryption key. The idea how ring LWE based inner product functional encryption scheme is constructed is similar to other existing inner product functional encryption schemes and also can be seen as a natural generalization of, of a ring LWE based public key encryption. The main idea is to produce uh, public keys that can be seen as ring LWE samples. Uh, recall that uh, we obtain such samples by sampling um, some values, say A, uniformly at random from some ring, usually ring of polynomial, which is the case in our scheme as well and some uh, secret and noise values, uh, usually sampled from some small distribution such as Gaussian distribution. To encrypt in our func uh, functional encryption scheme, uh, one does the same as uh, it's done in uh, ring LWE based public key encryption, um, but just um, we, se we encrypt coordinates of the vector that we want, so values x, i, uh, each one with a separate public key that we produced um, above. Uh, the point is here also that uh, a shared randomness needs to, needs to be used, uh, so that the values that, the, the random values that are used across uh, all these uh, uh, ciphertext values are, are shared. To generate a functional encryption key, one uses the fact that uh, ring LWE public key encryption scheme is key homomorphic. So uh, a functional key is produced as a linear combination of um, secret keys with respect to, to uh, coefficients of, of vector y. Finally, to decrypt an inner product, one uses the ciphertext homomorphic property of ring LWE and evaluates uh, uh, as it was in a standard way, which results in, in some value uh, plus some noise. And because we obtained this noise as it is standard, the, the values that were encrypted were also a bit scaled. So this scaling of then the result uh, helps us to, to eliminate the noise. Let's see what are the main challenges improving security of such schemes. Uh, as previously mentioned, the main challenge in functional encryption schemes is to prove that encryption is still indistinguishable even knowing functional keys. And as it turns out, in, in our case, functional keys reveal a bit more information about the underlying 
bring LWE problems than, than desired. Uh, maybe going directly to, to our scheme, uh, let's first just assume that, that uh, the adversary had no access to functional keys. Then one could simply argue that values in, in public keys, uh, sampled in this way, could be uh, seen as ring LWE samples, and one could then argue that they can be replaced by the hardness of uh, ring LWE problem with uniformly random ones, since the adversary could not distinguish this, this change. And then in the next step, also these values here could also be replaced by uniformly random sampled ones. Uh, and having uh, um, such values, then they, they, they hide, statistically hide the, the, the message. But since the adversary has some information about secret, secret values, uh, some known directly through, through, the, uh, through, the secret, through, the, through the functional keys, but some also uh, uh, are leaked through, through the noise in the, the decryption, one cannot simply replace uh, th this and these values uh, with uniformly random ones. But nevertheless, a, a similar strategy can be employed and with a bit of uh, resampling and also a bit of rewriting the, the, the ciphertext, uh, one can still replace uh, these values and actually also these values with some other values that statistically hide all the information uh, that could be used for distinguishing which message was encrypted. But to do so, one arrives to the following problem that we call multi-hint extended ring LWE problem. Uh, recall that uh, uh, standard ring LWE problem asks to uh, distinguish for say A and U uniformly sampled uh, values from, from some ring of polynomials uh, and uh, some S and E uh, uh, also sampled uh, from, from a ring of polynomials but from some small distribution, usually Gaussian distribution uh, so the, the ring LW problem asks to distinguish uh, this pair from, from, from uniformly, uh, uniformly at random sampled uh, pair. In the multi-hint extended ring LWE problem, we have a similar situation. We want to distinguish uh, these values from these values. But additionally, we are given some, some, some hints that reveal some information about the secret and, and the noise term in the, in the ring LWE sample. And what we were able to do, we were able to prove that if one incre increases uh, the, the starting uh, distribution of the noise and, and secret, um, w one can still argue that uh, with this a bit increased uh, uh, distribution, uh, that these hints uh, do not reveal enough information uh, to, to, to distinguish uh, the values. In particular, one can, can, uh, um, one can uh, uh, transfer the, the hardness of uh, um, this problem to, to, the, to the hardness of the original um, ring LWE problem. And uh, this allows us to, to, um, to rewrite, uh, so to, to change um, um, to change the ciphertext uh, uh, sampling by the challenger in, in an indistinguishable way for the adversary. Uh, actually, we, we can use this, uh, this trick twice in, in our proof, which uh, simplifies and gives a bit better parameters in comparison to the, uh, um, to the LWE um, proof, which also uh, used a multi-hint, well, extended LWE problem in, in their case, but uh, in their case this is not enough and, and uh, additional tricks need to be uh, employed, uh, so our proof is a bit, uh, a bit simpler. Nevertheless, using only hardness of multi-hint extended ring LWE problem, we were not able to prove adaptive security of our scheme. So what we needed to do is modify 
scheme slightly, particularly sampling public keys, since the, these are the ones that adversary can observe before uh, submitting messages in the adaptive security game. And we modified them in with a trick that was also used in LWE based uh, functional encryption schemes. Uh, in particular, re replace it with values sampled like this, uh, where we sample values AJ uh, shared across across public keys uniformly at random and secret values SIJ um, from some small Gaussian distribution. What one can argue is that values sampled like this are indistinguishable from random by a statistical argument. So not depending on the hardness of uh, underlying ring LWE problem or something like that. Uh, these arguments are usually known as leftover hash lemma and are reasonably standard uh, thing in LWE setting. In ring LWE settings, there are also results uh, showing that these kind of values are, are, um, are indistinguishable from random. Uh, some quite general results, some also a bit more specific. What we did is we took these results and a bit polished them to fit our purpose. Uh, to to have as as efficient scheme as possible, so to to get a bit better parameters than they are suggested in say the most uh, general um, general results. Uh, what is also interesting in the ring setting is that uh, this m value here uh, that uh, also tells us how big the the, the public keys public parameters will be, uh, does not need to be uh, uh, too big in the LWE setting, uh, so in the matri matrix setting, uh, it must be quite big, uh, but uh, here it can be, uh, say, constant for, uh, a bit depends, but uh, uh, how you want to choose parameters, but it does not grow, uh, um, uh, let's say, linearly with N or something like that. And having public keys uh, uh, statistically indistinguishable from random, uh, one can then use some standard arguments uh, with complexity leveraging to, to argue that uh, a similar proof as it was in se uh, selective case, so also using multi-hint extended ring LWE problem, but a bit in di a slightly different way, uh, one can lift a proof uh, uh, this proof to, to adaptive security without losing uh, much on, on uh, security assumptions. So what are the benefits of ring LWE setting? Well, um, ring LWE allows us, as said, to simplify the proofs, arriving to a bit better parameters in the end, and we did really carefully craft these parameters to not lose uh, efficiency uh, for, for too much. On the other hand, uh, ring settings allows some faster operations uh, due to the fact that uh, multiplying polynomials is, is a bit faster than multiplying, well, can be a bit faster than multiplying matrices with vectors. Uh, and this is, uh, for example, reflected uh, in this table where we compare with two known LWE-based uh, um, LWE-based inner product functional schemes, where um, procedures like setup and and encryption has this factor of n times log n, which is um, asymptotically what what's the cost of uh, multiplying uh, two polynomials, while for multiplying uh, matrix with a, with a vector, we have terms uh, n square uh, in setup and encryption as well. Uh, so there is an improvement here. Uh, but also uh, in the ring setting, we, we do have smaller keys since uh, in, in LWE settings, we, we need to have quite big uh, matrices to, to ensure security. In particular, uh, for example, for public key, uh, we have these uh, factors of n square 
log q square um, in both um, in both LWE uh, schemes, while in ring LWE we have only n times log q uh, fa factor, so uh, a huge improvement. Well, which might not seem on on paper as much, but it turns out that if uh, one implements uh, such a scheme uh, for say vectors of uh, reasonably big uh, uh, length, it turns out that then the public keys in the case of uh, uh, LWE can be even measured in gigabytes, while in ring LWE they are only megabytes uh, of size, so uh, a, a drastic uh, imp improvement. There is a, another uh, advantage which could be important for um, many applications. Uh, and th that is that ring setting allows to encrypt values uh, in one ciphertext in, in parallel. Uh, this is a well-known phenomenon that is also used in uh, homomorphic encryption. Uh, so in, in our case, it means that we are able to encrypt not just one vector, but uh, maybe thousands of vectors uh, in one ciphertext without losing uh, much in the performance, uh, actually uh, um, a really, really small addition here. Um, and, and this way, uh, then on decrypting, uh, not decrypting just, just one value, but uh, doing a kind of a SIMD type of uh, calculation, so in parallel decrypting uh, thousands of uh, 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 values of uh, evaluation of some function. Uh, in our case, inner product. As pointed out, we provided an efficient implementation of our scheme, and I will let my colleague Ang Schumann explain to you what were the problems and solutions in implementing our scheme. We need to perform very large polynomial multiplications for our scheme. We choose our primes such that the support efficient polynomial multiplication using number theoretic transform and fast modular reduction. We also need large fields for correctness of our scheme. We split our large primes using Chinese remainder theorem into smaller primes and perform individual multiplication using smaller primes. We provide a full residual number system based implementation using CRT. Finally, as the length of our polynomials can be very large, the rearrangement steps after entity or inverse entity can be very costly. To avoid this, we combine Kulituki entity and Gentleman Sunday inverse entity. For security, we also need samples from very large Gaussian distributions. We achieve this using two steps. First, we generate samples from a uh, Gaussian distribution with small and fixed standard deviation. Second, we combine the samples from the small distribution to generate samples from arbitrarily large Gaussian distribution. We perform both of these steps in constant time to remove any adverse effect of uh, any timing attacks. Here are our parameters for our implementations. We provide parameters for three different levels of post-quantum security. We also provide the set of CRT primes for each level of security. The implementation is available at the above mentioned GitHub repository. Thank you, Anshuman. To better understand what these performance numbers mean, we also implemented some uh, simple use case to demonstrate how our uh, scheme can be used. We showed how to use some simple machine learning on encrypted data. In particular, we wanted to do simple machine learning on encrypted images. Images can be seen as simply um, vector of pixels, uh, so for each pixel you get one value, and uh, using our scheme then you can uh, of course inc uh, encrypt, uh, uh, encrypt these vectors. What we worked with what is a quite standard data set in machine learning uh, known as MNIST data set of uh, handwritten digits, so each image consists of uh, one digit uh, that has been handwritten. Uh, the task is to, to classify or predict which, which image, uh, which digit is in the image. So using our scheme, one can encrypt this uh, image.
images. This can be seen as uh, 785 dimensional vectors. Uh, and evaluate a simple machine learning model. We used logistic regression because uh, uh, it only needs to evaluate uh, linear functions and we are bound in our skin to, to linear functions. Concretely, one needs to evaluate 10 inner product functions to get 10 predictions for each digit. Uh, and and what we observe is that uh, it takes roughly 381 milliseconds to, to encrypt such an image and then to, to evaluate the machine learning model that was learned before. Um, it takes only uh, 170 milliseconds so to, to evaluate 10 inner product functions. Uh, but notice also that uh, one can uh, encrypt uh, multiple uh, multiple images in, in one ciphertext without increasing the size of the ci ciphertext and uh, uh, worsening the, the, the time complexity of it. So uh, in fact uh, you can encrypt uh, up to 4092 images in parallel in one ciphertext and then uh, evaluate the model all, on all the images encrypted uh, simultaneously uh, without um, without worsening these uh, performance numbers. As a bonus and to make our scheme even more practical, we explain how the scheme can be uh, compiled to multi-client setting. So a setting where we have not just one encryptor, but many of them, each encrypting their own secret values, secret message. So there are known compilers how to do that. For example, Abdal et al. explained it in 2019. Uh, what we do here is we argue that our scheme can be used in such compilers and we even additionally um, extend this or a bit generalize it to identity-based decentralized setting. So we uh, end up with a scheme where um, the, the encryptors can in truly decentralized uh, way without uh, some trusted setup um, encrypt their values with some labels uh, and the decryptor in there is then able to decrypt inner product of, of these values and is not able to, to join ciphertext that were not meant to be joined, only those which correspond to, to the same label. For the conclusion, let's recap the results we presented in this talk. We provided an efficient Ring LWE based inner product functional encryption schemes with uh, selective and also adaptive security. We uh, provide uh, some new results on lattices needed to prove security of the mentioned schemes. Uh, most importantly, multi-hint extended ring LW problem or the re reduction of the difficulty of this problem to a standard ring LWE problem and also a, a, a version of leftover hash lemma for rings that we needed. Uh, to make our scheme more practical, we explained how to compile it to identity-based decentralized multi-client scheme uh, and provide an implementation, quite optimized implementation of our scheme with multiple parameters and security settings uh, and a, a simple showcase of how our scheme can be used. Of course, all further details can be, can be found in uh, the paper. Thank you for your attention and see you.